Today's video will be covering probably one of my first paranormal cases ever, and in that regard I hope all of you will remain respectful and open-minded, because we're gonna dive into some real dark magic. No joke. Actually, it's kinda weird to talk about this because it almost feels sacrilegious. While I may not be the most religious person in the world, I still at least want to remain respectful. Therefore, if you're Muslim, I feel it's fair that you know that I will be mentioning many things involving your faith and practices of Islam in general, as today's topic is about the possibility of this one Quran reading video that may or may not be cursed. And by cursed, I mean, like, actually cursed. Not like... Yeah. You know? So today I wanted to talk about this one video recommended by someone on my subreddit. This user cross posted a separate reddit post found in r slash internet mysteries where a separate user talks about two mysterious videos uploaded by a channel named Sarah Ali. These two videos are seemingly innocent Quran reading videos as I hear it's extremely common for people to just pull up these kinds of videos to play as background noise and it's, it's sort of a way to ease them into sleep as well. In many cultures, Quran readings aren't just verbal expressions of language but many believe it's a way to connect with God and to bring benevolence into one's life. Regardless of the reason, these kinds of videos are very popular, as seen by this screenshot posted by the Reddit user of the two videos uploaded by Sarah Ali, one of them garnering over 3 million views. The video is nothing more than just a screenshot of two prominently well-known Muslims who also happen to be the ones reciting verses from the Quran. Strangely enough, it's not even a complete verse of the Quran, as apparently these are cut off from before they are actually completed, and they're just looped awkwardly for a few hours more. The original post even claims that it's likely that this audio was actually ripped from somewhere else, somewhere else on YouTube, that is. Unfortunately, that has some consequences. At the time of this recording, it would seem that Sarah Ali has been copyright striked, and both of these videos have been pulled down from YouTube. Now, there's a reason for that, and honestly, videos like these are harmless, but in this case, there is much more to these two than one might initially think. While both have since been removed from YouTube for copyright reasons, this Reddit user was smart enough to back up one of the video files before this happened, and so, we'll be listening to these four sections of the video, titled simply, Quran. Take a listen to the first one. I can swallow pills easily. I can swallow pills like anybody. I overcome my fear from swallowing pills. I can swallow pills easily. I can swallow pills like anybody. I overcome my fear from swallowing pills. I can swallow pills easily. This goes on for about a minute or so until eventually going back to the prayer. The term, I can swallow pills easily, I overcome my fear of swallowing pills, is likely some sort of subliminal messaging for either the person who uploaded the video or for anyone listening. Perhaps in some naive sense, Sarah Ali hid these messages within the reading to give positive messaging to all who listen. Thing is, doing this is incredibly disrespectful. Stopping a Quran reading just for a motivational message is just pretty rude. In fact, I have a hard time believing that anyone who is actually Muslim would do this on purpose. So while I would brush this off as something incredibly disrespectful yet naive from a well-meaning video, it's the later messages that have me thinking that this might be a bit darker. Take a listen to the next three hidden messages. My mind is blocking any unnecessary fears. My mind is releasing any unnecessary fears. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is talking to. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is dating. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is talking to. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is dating. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is talking to. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is dating. The relationship between Owen Brown and any woman he is talking to get destroyed. The relationship between Owen Brown and any woman he is dating gets destroyed. Brown is spending the rest of his life with me. Owen Brown is spending the rest of his life with me. Owen Brown is coming back to Oric University for me. Owen Brown listen to every word I say to him. Owen Brown listen to every order I give him. Owen Brown listen to every word I say to him. Owen Brown listen to every order I give him. Owen Brown listen to every word I say to him. Owen Brown listen to every order I give him. Owen Brown listen to every word I say to him. Owen Brown listen to every order I give him. Yeah. 
If you didn't catch that, then I'll be repeating what they said. My mind is blocking any unnecessary fears. My mind is releasing any unnecessary fears. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he is talking to. Owen Brown gets dumped and ghosted by any woman he's dating. The relationship between Owen Brown and any woman he is talking to gets destroyed. The relationship between Owen Brown and any woman he is dating gets destroyed. Owen Brown is spending the rest of his life with me. Owen Brown is coming back to York University for me. Owen Brown listens to every word I say to him. Owen Brown listens to every order I give him. Owen Brown is not enough to every female. So, what could this all mean? Well, it doesn't take long to really connect the dots here. Reading the Quran is much like praying, and for many Muslims, prayer brings good health, and it provides answers to problems they face. Yes, they can ask for things, but true prayer doesn't necessarily ask for the demolishment of one person's life. So knowing this, I came to a conclusion. This video is cursed. Now how did I come to that conclusion? Well, this video reminded me of chants given to higher beings made by cultists and in black magic in general, more often than not when they try to get something that they normally could not obtain. And in this case, I first thought that whoever this was, was probably using these phrases to hypnotize or indoctrinate Owen Brown, the, I assume, man that she wants to be with while he listens to the video. The OP and the Muslim community also agree, as stated in the post. The thing is, I don't really believe that Sarah Ali really thinks Owen Brown would listen to this. In fact, I don't think she intended to him to listen at all, but to trick others into listening in order to manifest this energy into reality. However, this is not manifestation of goodwill. In fact, this is incredibly manipulative to the point where I thought that maybe, perhaps, it could be some sort of curse, a chant. As mentioned before, you see this in black magic a lot. And while the Quran would normally prevent black magic from manifesting, especially during a recital of a certain verse from the Quran, I believe Sarah Ali is using the energy from everyone who is listening and praying alongside these videos and using that energy into a spell. And the reason I'm coming to this conclusion is because I am currently dating someone who is both Muslim and Southeast Asian. When I brought this up with my partner, and how it could be the work of black magic, she came to the conclusion that it was similar to something called Sun Tao. Sun Tao is a term that describes poisonous black magic that is sent physically or transparently to a victim. In other words, these are curses that some people within Southeast Asia perform, either to gain what they want through force, or to influence others into doing their bidding. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but in Southeast Asia, this sort of paranormal stuff is a strong belief. So much so that it can be argued as a fact to some. It's so well believed that even politicians have been caught performing black magic against their rivals. The following information I've gathered was from this video. So if you're interested and can understand the language, then I'd say give it a watch. And don't worry, it's Ramadan, so you won't be summoning bad gen by watching it. Anyway, according to this video, Sun Tao comes in three parts. Sun Tao Zahir, Sun Tao Gaib, and a combination of both. Sun Tao Zahir is the physical manifestation of a spell, either to enhance or to perfect something. People who perform this sort of spell often use real-world conduits such as venom or toxic herbs or other things such as the sort. These kinds of spells need to be physically performed or ingested through the victim's body, either by eating the spell, applying the spell to the skin, injecting the spell into the victim's blood, smelling it, or any combination of these four. Meanwhile, Santao Gaib is the opposite. As opposed to being physical, this is completely intangible. This is more akin of what most people think a spell is. It is more aligned with the practice of demonology, coercing demons and spirits to do your bidding, etc. However, it's much more strict and more complicated than being buddies with a demon like in Shin Megami Tensei. In fact, the rules are incredibly strict, so much so that it can often lead to the downfall of the caster as opposed to the victim. Notably, there's one form of Santo Gaid that matches what we're talking about, and that being Seru. Seru means to call or to invite, and it's a form of Santo Gaid that utilizes speech, text, symbols, and drawings. With this curse, you can make your wishes come true, but again, it's incredibly strict, and, uh, well, not so fun fact, it requires an animal sacrifice. 
Now, notice I said text and speech. If we were to believe that this is in fact a curse, then the bigger picture begins to get much clearer. Sarah Ali is likely a former student of York University. In fact, we know there is 100% a student who used to be in York University because there exists a LinkedIn profile of a Sarah Ali that went to said university. Moreover, she is stated to live in Toronto where York University is located. There also exists another Sarah Ali who attended York College in the UK. And wouldn't you know it, she attended around the same time these videos were uploaded. Is it a coincidence? Maybe. Regardless, it's likely here, when she used to attend, that our Sarah met a man by the name of Owen Brown. Owen must have been someone she really liked, perhaps even obsessed over. It's very clear that she was jealous of him, perhaps even stalking him, as we hear in this video that she wanted Owen Brown to fail in every relationship he had with every woman he ever met. Except, of course, her. She even mentions him coming back to York University, implying that Owen Brown left. What's more, this is very much malefic in nature. It's not some sweet love potion or some love hypnosis or whatever. It's very clear that Sarah Ali wants to control Owen, all of his life aspects and his romantic life in general. She repeats in the video that Owen Brown will obey everything she says. Owen Brown will listen to every word she tells him. This is not a sweet romantic thing, this is a manipulative relationship, and it could be much more harmful than we think. Look, getting past the whole paranormal aspect of all of this, Sarah Ali could in fact be a real human being who really believes in this. Whether or not you do is irrelevant. The point is this woman could be feverishly obsessed with Owen Brown to the point where she could be considered a stalker. Nobody in their right mind would post a video of a Quran reading and hide subliminal messages of manipulation to one specific person unless they were sick enough to cause them harm or believe that they could control them by any means necessary. Now, this is but just a slice of what could be going on. I'm not familiar with other cultures out there that also practice black magic, but I'm assuming that in many cases it'll be similar to what I have explained. It could be that this isn't really black magic and that it could be just some way of manifesting something in Sarah's life, but regardless, it is still done with ill intent. There's also the matter of the first video, which is 10 hours long yet no longer exists. Did this too have subliminal messages? Well, I was able to actually find the video, as it was re-uploaded by someone that I'm assuming didn't know any better. Yes, this is the Sarah Ali edit, and yes, there are voices in this one too. However, this one is far more subtle, and it's hidden underneath the prayer. Unfortunately, I can't show you that one part of the video due to copyright infringement, but I can show you at least a second of the video to show you that there is still mumbling within it. Take a listen. To any female except me. Owen Brown is nobody to any female except me. What's interesting to me is that many people in the comments section actually acknowledge the muttering and some even go as far as to call this a spell. Just as I explained earlier, though some have claimed that this is somehow a spell or a curse meant to control someone, many others believe that Owen Brown is actually not a real person at all, but in fact the name of a djinn. But like I said earlier, whether or not you believe in the paranormal is irrelevant because the fact is this person, Sarah Ali, probably does. And she is resorting to doing some crazy shit just to get the attention of a man she probably liked. As for whether or not she stalks the man in real life is a mystery, but hopefully this is the last we'll hear of Sarah Ali. Because if her obsession has anything to say about her real life tendencies, then it could be possible that something worse could happen in reality.